the silent there. I can still hear. I can still hear. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Hello, <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Fighters Plus edition of Keep Calm and Game On, where we keep calm and game on. I'm your special guest host, Kid Segoy, along with the two OGs, Asian Pikachu215 and Lionel, Yo. a.k.a. Dark Valentine 1984, and a very special guest, our friend Byron, who I don't happen to know very well, but, you know, happy to have him here tonight. Introduce my partner, my, my partner in crime for City Lights. He's his partner in crime for <laughs> one of the... One of the yeah. another people in the Mugen community as well. Oh, nice, nice. Well, tonight we're doing a special pre E3 edition of KC Go, and we're trying to be your one stop shop for all your pre E3 needs. We got a couple of topics. We're going to try to keep it short tonight because we know you're getting all this information from all these different places. And if you chose to rock with us tonight, we thank you very much. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, tonight we're just going to be on our pre-E3 stuff. Uh, you know, I don't know if I should well, go with the uh, obligatory what have we been doing lately, as I'm sure uh, we've been trying to catch as much of course. as we Of course, that's our can. always our opening. But, uh, yeah, so... I well, was, that's how, that's what we always do. Well, I'll start it off with you, Asian Pikachu, my man. What you been doing? Well, uh, uh, besides just watching, like, you know, everybody playing their, playing their butt off on Tekken 7... Um, I've been hitting the League of, League of Legends games, like, you know, just trying to climb before the season's over, even though, despite making Platinum, I'm I'm trying my best to, you know, climb to Diamond, or hopefully further. Uh, yeah, obviously, it's still been a, it's been a struggle when you're playing a one trick and one lane, so that's when you have to depend on other teammates. But you do what you can, and, you know, try to enjoy yourself, and try to tell yourself it's a game, it's just a game, and, you know, no need to, like, you know, go smash your keyboard or, you know, throw away your monitor or something like that. So, mainly just want to keep keep it calm and simple. And that's exactly Other than that, I... I've been also... Go ahead. And that's exactly why I play fighting games mainly, ladies and gentlemen, so I don't have anyone else to blame when I suck. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, well, Andy. I mean, if you want to. I mean, if you. Well, yes, yeah, suppose that's true. You got no one to blame but yourself. So mainly, you want to tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna suck at this game. I'm gonna suck. Keep on sucking. <laughs> no, but yeah, okay, that came all wrong. Sorry about that, folks. I know there. I know there are like you know uh, parents like you know that are watching our podcast like, with their kids. Kids right next to them. I was like, what did he just say? And then I was like, oh, I gotta bleep that out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Leave it. <laughs> All right, where's my camera? <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, so, how about you, OG uh, Dark Valentine? How, what you been up to, man? Well, finally back at work after. Uh, let me let me quote this: intentional, unintentional vacation from work. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, let's. I'll just. That's about as much as I could say on that. Uh, but other than that, uh, getting back into. GTA Online, since I'm taking a break from ESO, I'm letting the first few weeks of the expansion for ESO Morrowind go through, because with, with each update, there's always going to be some problems. This is Bethesda, after all, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of par for the course to just let the game take its course, so I've been getting back on my PS4 playing, playing this, and um, just, just still... Um, Waiting for Sonic Mania to come around. I'm, I'm going to be doing a live stream. Uh, I think the week it comes out of um, mostly the old school Sonic games. Um, hopefully by then I'll have my Raspberry Pi ready for streaming. Uh, other than that, man, nothing else has been going on on my end. It's just been quiet. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take. I'll take. I'll take. I think yeah. the stream froze. I think the the play stream froze. I don't see oh. it live anymore. Oh shit! Oh man! Um, damn! It still says it's streaming. Yeah, if give it a sec, you may have. Well, then again, if people are you know doing their thing on Twitch with um, E3, there's a good chance it's taking up all the bandwidth. It would not surprise me if that's the case. 
Are you sure about that? I mean, I've seen I've seen people like you know streaming with you know their Skype on. It's looking fine. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is the bandwidth on their servers. Yeah, that can usually be an issue, and that's usually an issue on Twitch. The is bandwidth on their server, the user. No, I, I just went to it and. Uh, I'm, hey, you I'm know, catch you later. See you later, man. Have a good day at work. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. See you next time. All right. <laughs> yeah, I just went to it and we're still on. Hmm. Wait. I s- wow, that's kind of weird. Let me try yeah. refreshing. Yeah, you might want to try and refresh it. Yeah, it says I'm live. But... Yeah, I mean, I see it live, but I see it freezing. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Jesus Christ, did they really have to bring me all the way out here? Okay. But yeah, that's it for me, man. I have not much else. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Baron? Um, what, what have you been up to gaming wise? Uh, gaming wise, mostly I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy uh, 14. Right now, it's the Heaven's War expansion, but right now they're already getting ready for the new one, Stormblood, which will be on the twentieth. So, and right now, just doing a lot of level grinding, and what's even worse is trying to work out the, one of those crafting classes. Yeah, I heard they did something that took classes out of the out of the Final Fantasy. This How can time I help? Oh, uh, not too much, but they did now make it much easier for you to grind multiple classes at different times than having to take like probably like a week or so. But now they kind of like minimize it to where you can at least work it within a day. But aside from that, I also been playing Tekken and Injustice Two. Nice. Good, nice. Good yeah. And yeah, right now it's still kind of taking me a while to get back into the groove as far as playing fighting games because that was pretty much my niche when I first got introduced into video games. Yeah, I, I feel you. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, matter of fact, that's what I've been doing mostly gaming wise, is playing a lot of Tekken. Trying to actually get into the groove of learning 3D fighters and whatnot. And who yes. are you using in uh, Tekken? I'm using Oscar Kazama. Nice. Very nice. If uh, I mean, for people out there who wants like a easy pickup on Tekken, I like you know for like let's say first timers, I think first first timers you probably want to ask people like you know how do you play Tekken. And another one is if you want to pick up like you know simple characters to start off and then go tough later on, I would say start off with Forest Law. I mean, start off with Law. That was that I will probably recommend that. I don't know about the rest of you guys though. Well, you go ahead. You go ahead. I've heard that Law is more of an intermediate character, but like I don't know, it's easy to look like you're doing cool stuff with Law. Right. I mean, I mean, he's the first character I picked up right. when I Everybody. first started from Tekken. I, mean, I think that was all of us, man. Uh, not, not really, not me. The first two characters, I, and I mean specifically saying two, the first two characters I picked up on were Paul and Nina. That's the two I picked up on, and they've been my mainstays ever since. The, fir- the first two characters I picked in Tekken was Kazi at first and then Law. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. For me, well, it was first Kazuya, then jumped to Jen before his list that got changed for Tekken 4. Then I started using more of uh, Eddie Gordo, then Christy, then back to Eddie. Nice, nice. But uh, yeah, nice. back to uh, now that we've uh, got that all in order, now it's time to talk well, about. Hold on, let me pause you right there. Uh, let me give a shout out to. Well, we got a happy birthday, so uh, let me give a happy birthday to Street Fighter EX2, which turns 18 years old today. Yes. Street Fighter yeah. officially turning 18. They now, are an adult now. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. The, the original good 3D Street Fighter turning 18 years old. That's they what need, I'm talking They about. no longer need an adult. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, now we just need that fighting EX layer, and we're good to go. Yes, oh yes, sir. yes, sir. Yeah. But uh, right, with, yeah, with that out of the way, let's talk E3. <laughs> you have the floor, <laughs> uh, Clay. All right. Well, uh, first, let's talk about what I think everyone is very, very excited about, and that is Dragon Ball Fighters Z. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, wow. oh man, I was game, hyped about it. It looked play so Dragon awesome. Look hype or what? I mean, oh yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not the hugest Dragon Ball fan, but I've always said, if an anime, if an anime property wants a company that can do their game right, I think Arxis is the best possible company to capture the feel of of an anime, specifically Dragon Ball. Um. I hope that at some point they do the same thing with the Naruto series because I think that they can really capture that essence really, really well in that format. Man, but it looks so fast-paced. Like, is, is are they trying to kill Capcom or what? Like, Well, well, look, look at it from this point. And this is from somebody who played uh, Budokai 3 when it was originally out on PS2 back in the day. I had it back then before my... PS2 was taken. Um, Budokai 3 in itself was like the pinnacle of Dragon Ball as far to, as far as fighting goes, because it was basically just like this, 2.5D. And it was very fast-paced. Yeah, you, you pretty much had all the, uh, the concurrent characters and ones with the movie tie-ins. Very fast-paced, very technical, all-around great gameplay. There was never a dull moment. So seeing Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Fighter Z live up to the standard that Budokai 3 gave, which, by the way, there is an HD re, uh, re-release of Budokai 2 and, well, Budokai 1 and 3. We're just going to, like, we're going to pretend 2 doesn't exist. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for those who actually played Part 2, they probably know what I'm talking about here. That okay. was, th- that was total ass. I'm not even going to get into that one. If I if I had a week, I couldn't begin to explain the problems with that game. Holy shit! <laughs> so it looks like this is gonna be a three v three system. So wow. So, dude, should we say this is like a Marvel vs. Capcom done right? <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom the good edition. <laughs> um, well, I, I can see them, I, but I can see Arxis being unique in the sense that they'll introduce their own gameplay mechanics and their own gameplay style. I think that it is an attempt to give that specific audience a fighting game that they can be enthusiastic about instead of getting cringy every time they hear a new announcement about the direction that the gameplay system is going. Right. Yeah, that is true. Potentially it does look good. Potentially the trailer looked good. I, I think Dragon Ball fighting with the X-Arc system or the X art visual and pacing, it can't go wrong. It looks looks like it's even faster. I mean, yeah, cause I think it, yeah, because I think this might be a simple, yeah, because I think this might be a simple that Arcanisms may try for future games. Because so especially with a game like Dragon Ball, they may be able to revolutionize it. True. True. Yeah. Plus. Plus, I think this will, this will do a lot to increase Arc Systems financially because if they do licensed products right, then maybe more companies that own licensed products like Bandai and Namco and other companies will come to them to develop games for them and they will make money off of it and increase their own foothold in the industry. Because that's true. Let's keep it. Let's keep it real here. Arxis, they do a lot for their fans and for their fan base around the world as far as putting out good PC ports, and they do it all on a small budget. Right. They they do it on a smaller budget than we probably think they do. Yeah, that is true. I mean, looking at, let's see, this game doesn't come out, what, like, next year, until next year? Yeah. But it will be upon us before we know it. Well, hopefully, I mean, I can see potentially being good. Um, 
Well, yeah, I don't want to go in, down the rabbit hole on this on this topic. I think we're all really enthusiastic about it. I think that this will do more to bring prominence to Arxis's name in, in the more casual gamer and casual uh, per, person in this, you know, that's a part of this lifestyle. Um, right. Because Dragon Ball is so huge, it touches people from all different walks of life and all different interests. So if they make something that jumps out to people and has a visual presentation that draws in people who are longtime Dragon Ball fans, then it might sell out. It might sell out the stores and you know bust out the bandwidth, you know, because Dragon Ball is huge, you know. Yeah, very true. Yeah, we got like what people have high expectations now with this this kind of game. Well, yeah. I mean, I think people have high expectations of Arc System Works in general, and I don't think they they disappoint very often. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very seldom that a developer, let alone publisher, will ever disappoint their fans if the game is being done right. Like we can take example, CD Projekt Red. That's a very perfect example. All all of the Witcher games, specifically Witcher Three, was the best that they've done. Not one disappointed. I mean, well, the first one was like what isometric, but it, in part. But it, you go ahead. You go ahead. But it, 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 it was still, but it was still a good game. And right, they were just starting out as a developer, so they probably didn't have the money to actually create the full vision that they wanted. But, right. But back to what you were saying. Yeah. The um. Yeah, when it came to, you know, like we can just use them as an example. I mean, yeah, you're right about that. If it came to the budget, the full vision, you know, wasn't achieved, but it still got their name out there because it was something different. Yeah, it was isometric, it, like certain games like um, Dungeon Siege, for example, even though that wasn't true isometric. We're going to exclude three. I don't know what the hell that shit was going with. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, let's just say it was more along the lines of uh, Dungeon Siege 2, which I have somewhere. Um, but it still turned out a great game, solid gameplay, nice story. It, it's a little confusing. But when Part 2 came around, that's when it started really picking up. And they really got their foothold because it, because CD Projekt Red showed that they cared about their fans. They cared well, about uh, the fan base. Did you know that The Witcher was based, based on a, a series of novels? Yes. Yes, I'm very aware, and that's and that's what made it even better because they had source material, which which really made it great. Which which it's, gives it's, you which gives you an idea of how to implement certain things in the world into the gameplay. You don't have to think of ideas from scratch, basically. Yeah, especially if there's already something established that they can work with. Which hey, I give it a big thumbs up for that one. But, uh, not ma not many developers can actually do that. I mean, they'll they'll look at it, and take bits and pieces, chop it up, screw it up, and try to twist it their own way. And sometimes that doesn't work out. I mean, we've seen the results of that before. Right. Yeah. I mean, hopefully that's well. I can always say just looking at the trailer, it's better than SF five. Yeah, which will never touch or see the light of day on my PS4. Fuck that noise. <laughs> it ain't happening. I even tell that to yeah. Joe. I said, you better not go by your brother-in-law and get Street Fighter, uh, well, Street Fighter Five, and get and put that shit on my PS4 when you come over. Fuck that shit. I will never, <laughs> I don't want to see a, a, a damn uh, save file anywhere on that shit. <laughs> the hell with that, man. So potentially, could we get, could we see this at Evo? Of course. Of course, because when you look it's at a, a fighting game, game. <laughs> when you, when you, no, nah, but when you look at when you look at a game like Smash Bros, for example, a big part of Smash Bros' appeal is the recognizable characters, right? And right. That's I think that will draw spectators in as well. Like I have no doubt that Arxis is going to attempt to make a game that's in line with the rest of their titles and have it maybe because. You know, doing Gatling combos and, and little chain combos and Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear is not hard, but it's when you peel back those layers in the game is what makes it hard. So it's going to be a game that's easy for friends to pick up and say, I'm going to pick Vegeta, Piccolo, and such and such and kick your ass. And then it's also going to have that depth for people who want to, who want to, yeah, I'm going to get you with the corner reset and the mix up and switch sides on you. You know what I mean? So I think that. 
they'll try to strike that balance and make it exciting visually to look at to where it'll it'll benefit it'll be a benefit to put it out on front street it's a big enough company as far as the fighting game niche it's a big enough franchise as far as the commercial niche i think that it can work on both levels right right oh and yeah. it, i don't mean to cut you off but if, if the audience for those of you watching there's a reason why i'm kind of not looking at the screen right now i'm kind of still playing gta so yeah in case someone asked <laughs> Or, you, ahead, know, you can say your computer's on that end. You can say your computer's on that end. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of in front of it, but yeah. The TV is on the far side of the room, so yeah. <laughs> I can't blame you. I have my TV actually right on my left side. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh... Well, nonetheless, yeah. Nonetheless, I think we all can say I can't wait. And, you know, hopefully, well, once it comes out, Everyone will just like you know hype it up, or just well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I can quote Bart Scott when he played for the New York Jets before they played the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship game. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did they beat them? Did they beat them that year? Yeah, we we beat them in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, the Jets <laughs> have been sucking ever since. Yeah, but uh, okay. well. I just want to touch quickly on uh, since EA did, did their thing yesterday. Um, well, let's go on to let's just go on to the next topic. We're excited for okay. We're excited for Dragon Ball Fighters. Let's move on to EA then, which is part of E3. Yeah. Um. Since since EA did their thing yesterday, I I want to say that um they they they're doing two things so far, at least in the sport on the sports set that I don't necessarily agree with, and I think. Um, a lot of people probably are in agreement with this. I'm not a fan of the Force Cinematic Sports Career Mode. Um, oh, you mean the Madden 18 Story Mode? And, and FIFA, I think FIFA has one too as well. Hmm. Yeah, they're doing a Alex Hunt in Story Mode yeah, called I'm, a Journey. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I love Spike Lee and everything, but I think he started a really bad trend when he um. When they had him make pretty much, he got game 1.5 on NBA 2K16. I thought that, mm-hmm. I thought that, like, because it, it takes the person's ability to have their own personality. It's too scripted. When I play a career mode, like, I wanted to make Drajan Petrovic on on a 2K16, but he's not from Harlem. Like, right. his parents ain't black. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. He, he would never go by frequency vibrations. Like, you know, like, and another... Rest, an, in, a, 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 rest a, in peace, his soul, man. Yeah, man, rest in peace to, to uh, Drajan Petrovic. But, uh, yeah, like, really, it's just, it's just hard to really get enthusiastic about that. And then on top of that, they keep trying to resurrect the NBA Live Series. And it's like 2K owns basketball. Like, you guys... I cannot hope to uproot that fan base at this point. They had their chance and they blew it. Yeah. I think they had way too many bugs and, to uh, kill themselves. And and this is me saying it from the perspective that I don't play sports games like I used to. And even I know uh, <laughs> EA blew that one big time. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have a, like, what? They have a campaign mode called The One, so... I mean, you customize your characters to. That's just that's just like career mode, isn't it? Yeah, man. My... It's it, they're doing a force cinematic type thing, and I don't think that I, I don't think that's cool. Like, they're trying to do what they did with their boxing game, which was the only one that made sense. Yeah, but see that that's the thing. That wasn't a career mode. It was just a story mode. It was yeah. Just, it was just the story within the game. Like, they didn't ask me to create Andre Bishop. Andre Bishop was just there. Like Yeah. And the story was compelling and it worked, you know what I'm saying? Like they did it right, but like in a in a sports game, I think like more so people want to like be themselves and like you can create compelling stories around boxing and combat sports because of the like life or death type of aspect that goes with that. Like you know what I mean with with basketball 
like any any dramatic any dramatic content that you put into it like kind of just seems like reaching yeah it doesn't mm-hmm. even make i mean you can create a story mode with anybody it just doesn't make sense at all i mean yeah I don't. I don't believe. I, if they want to have it, then don't have it tied into the actual my career or my player mode. Yeah. Like in Fight Night, they had Champion mode, which was the story, and then they had Legacy mode, which was the classic career mode. You train your fighter and you build up from being a scrub to being the greatest of all time. Like I feel like they got it all messed up when they started to, you know, try to merge those two things. Well, are you going to play the demo of NBA Live 18 when it comes out in August? Of course, of course. Why not? It's a demo. Like, you know, I'm going to give them a chance because I grew up on NBA Live like everybody else who played NBA games in the 90s and early 2000s before 2K really hit their stride. Right. So I still still have respect for them, but I really, with with the game that 2K puts out year after year where they improve it and bring it closer to the the, the actual presentation of what you watch when you watch an NBA game, it's going to take a lot for EA to catch up to that, especially with how their, how their fan base is just tuned in to... True. UK. Right, true. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they're going... They also made us... Made an announcement that, you like, you know, you you could represent the city when you... Like, you know, wherever city you're in when you're playing uh, live or uh, Madden, I believe. That's what EA has announced. I think I'm not quite sure because I think I missed a, I saw a little bit of the conference, but I think I missed majority of it. And that's right. Cool. And, and that's cool and everything, but it's no substitute for solid gameplay. Like, and that's what EA games like, you know, and not just the sports yeah. games, but there's a sometimes EA has a real a real bad quality problem. Like. They're such a big company. They're such a big company that they just do whatever. Like, when, they're when, a big company. They just make stupid decisions. When when, just, yeah. when, Madden, when, comes, when, when Madden went exclusive after two thousand and five, you've seen a steady decline in the quality and the improvement between each Madden game because there wasn't as much. There wasn't any competition, and football is America's sport. So it's like people are gonna buy Madden because it's Madden. There's nothing else. Right. Yeah. But the gameplay, I mean, it changes like, you know, every year, but I mean, it's, it's qual- but, I mean, it's still essentially the same thing. But it's not but it's not always for the better. The gameplay doesn't always change for the better. And that I can agree with. Like there are people out here who play a specific year of Madden like this is the perfect Madden for me. Then there's people over here who might like update the rosters and play this version of Madden. This is the perfect Madden for me. The passing game and the run game is balanced. And the oh, defense. I'm guilty. Of, I'm guilty of that party. Like I still have Madden 2005. I still have Madden 2005 on my uh computer. I, yeah, I, 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 still play, I actually update my rosters. I still play NFL 2K5 for original Xbox. To me, that's the best football game still to this day. Yeah. Right. Um. I, yeah. I also seen the new map for uh for Battlefield One last night, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, because they um they kind of really tried to nail trench warfare World War One style. Like it it was dark and people was running up on people with trench guns and stabbing them with the bayonet, and it was all close and claustrophobic in there. I, I thought it looked really nice. I'm not really a shooter person, but. I think it's cool since World War One isn't really explored on in first person shooter games too much to see yeah. they, they had a little bit of an attention to detail as far as trying to simulate trench warfare since that was the way that they used to fight back in the early nineteen hundreds. That's true. Okay. That's very true. Okay, let me pause you guys for a second. Uh we got a quick update and it's sports related. Uh congratulations to the Pittsburgh Penguins for winning the Stanley Cup. Fucking penguins! I'm from Pittsburgh. Let's go. I thought the game <laughs> was tomorrow, though. <laughs> yeah, been, hey, you I'd, have been like, the yeah, I'd have been like, yeah, I can't make it tonight. <laughs> are done. you gonna go to the? Are you gonna go to the parade? <laughs> nah, man. There's like, I can probably see it from my window though, because I, I like, if you look out my window, you can see Console Energy Center. 
from nice uh, from nice. the window. So, or, mm. and now they call it PPG Paints Arena or whatever. But all right. All right, uh, let's talk about, let's see, Need for Speed. I mean, looking at the trailer, don't you think it just looks like Fast and the Furious movie? Well, let's, let's, let's be honest here. How many years has Need for Speed been going on that tried to emulate what the Fast and the Furious movies have done, and now they, they've sat there and perfected it long enough? I mean, I personally, I'm still a fan of Hot Pursuit 2, and I'm talking about the PS2 version of Hot Pursuit 2. Uh, the reboot that was released on PS3, Xbox 360 was good, and I still have that, and it plays true to form. But, you know, they tried to pretty much do what EA's doing, put a story behind it, and it all started with Need for Speed Underground, even though Underground 2 is the best one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Underground yeah. 2 was great. Yeah. It was definitely good. So, I mean, it, to see that it's now following the name Need for Speed on top of doing other things that's not so Need for Speed like. It's interesting to say the least. I mean, we got we got some uh, some juicy details just from seeing it alone was good enough. But uh, I th- it could have done a little bit more at the presentation. But I mean, it because it looked like an action movie outright. <laughs> Let's just admit it, action movie, the video game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's just partially because we're undergoing another one of those mergers in video game genres where they're basically trying to they're trying to inject like remember 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 back in the day when RPG elements started becoming present in a lot more different types of games and then yeah and then before you know it like every game has RPG elements in it I think now yeah. I think now a lot of companies are going for a cinematic story in games that don't traditionally have cinematic stories. And yeah. I, I guess they see it as the growing trend. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I think that it could be done for the better or for the worse. I think I think a racing game I think a racing game, depending on the angle that the racing game or the car game is coming from, could be a good playground to have some story in it or whatever. Um, Need for Speed has always tried, like, especially in recent years, to be, like, kind of the arcade racer and then have their little forays into the simulation side of things. So I think it's kind of par for the course for what Need for Speed is to people. Now, if Gran Turismo came out and had a fucking story mode, I'm fucking done. Yeah, I think uh, Forza is taking over that one story part. But because we haven't seen a Gran Turismo game in a while, Forza Motorsports actually taking that over pretty good. I mean, it, it looks great. It on It's almost on a uh, Gran Turismo level as far as looks go. I never personally played it, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, but it's one of those, it's one of those things. Number one, since the PS4's audience is way bigger than the Xbox One audience, at least the perception is that... Um, and then on top of that, like Gran Turismo is one of those things, unlike NBA Live type of figure, that can step right back into the market and get the fans and get people to come back because it's Gran Turismo. That's the that's yeah. A, that's one of the first games for all of us where we looked at it and said, "Yo, is that fucking real?" Yeah. That's true because I mean every Gran Turismo is basically I mean use real world cars, real world physics, and pretty much give you anything you want to know about that specific vehicle and brand somewhat somewhat like what the hot pursuit reboot did same thing it's just that we could just call it need for speed burnout because it was by criterion as well <laughs> mm-hmm. but i mean no joke i mean yeah. the smartest the smartest thing they ever did was team up with criterion because i mean shit you mean, you, mean, you mean you mean by criterion yeah there we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's Pretty what, much. That's what EA does. They 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 walk up to you like, hey, I like what you do. Throw some money at you. We're buying it. Yeah, uh, that's what they did. The buy Criterion. You know, uh, there's a couple other companies that I I can't name off the top of my head, but yeah. Yeah, I I still say their heyday was in the Sega Genesis era. Give me give me Road Rash too any day. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I still remember the code for the wild thing 2000. Holy shit. <laughs> Try finishing a try finishing a stage going at two hundred plus miles an hour. Yeah, that's just gonna be that's just gonna be hell, dude. Oh man. Um. So All right, and the rest of the lineup. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was about to ask. Just about to ask. So, what else did EA come with? Uh, Battlefront. Um, Battlefront. Okay. Star Wars Battlefront Two. They also got a got a let's see a story. Another story is a Prison Break game, which is. You're gonna be using a. It's a co-op game where you split screen in a. I don't know how how split screen works, especially now. I don't think we ever. I mean, we had it in the past, but how does it work? Like you know, with a co-op style. Well, if I had to, I'm gonna take a stab at this. If I had to take a stab, it's more than likely going to be local. I can't. If it's gonna be split screen, I don't see it being online. I more see it being um local co-op. Because, I mean, if they try to do it online and having split screen, it's really it's going to be pointless. Yeah, yeah. You, might, you, you, yeah. you might well treat it like Resident Evil 5 at that point if you're going to have it online. But if it's local offline, yeah, I can see that working. Because look at, in this day and age, how many offline games have split screen? How many? How many I, right? Yeah, it probably, I can count on my hand probably how many current gen games have offline capabilities with offline split screen and just that only. Everything is either always online or it's a re- or it's a requirement or it's optional. Never the fact where it's not needed. It'll be interesting. Right. Right. I mean I can see I mean if it's it's like a if it's a prison break story, I can like you know I can see like you know some some type of action and some type of like a depressing kind of stuff, but I mean I don't think I've ever played like a you know prison break kind of game, let alone like you know playing it on split screen. Well, I, I think that you go ahead, you go ahead. I don't know. I think it lends itself to some interesting co-op mechanics, though. True, true. Yeah, Byron, what's your take on it? Yeah, I mean, from my pers- from my experience, you can think of games like Gears of War. As far as that goes, that's mostly localized. But just trying to connect this with like online play would make the game itself a bit jittery. I mean, trying to follow up with what other players are doing. Right. Unless it's going to be dedicated servers, then yeah. Which, let's face it, I can count on one hand how many games have dedicated servers there where it wouldn't be a problem. Everything is pretty much peer to peer. Mm-hmm. Or. You know, or pretty much create local server on that person's connection, whoever has the strongest connection, and then go from there. Yeah, yeah not really a smart system, but I guess whatever works for whatever company. Well, I mean, if you're like able to build a system that's kind of similar to how like most MMOs make their games, or basically like finding games in general with their online system, that can work. Especially for those that are uh, cooperative. True. 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 Word now, <laughs> right, and there's another. Um, I think uh, they, you see, Bioware, they got a a new IP called Anthem. I mean, they didn't show that. EA didn't show any gameplay, but that's what they. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay, it's man. It's okay. So they got a new a uh, sci-fi game called uh, Anthem. Which I didn't see much on EA yesterday. I think I saw a little on uh, today, though. I mean, but we're gonna go. We're gonna say that in a little while. What about Star Wars Battlefront Two? What do you guys think? Hmm. They, like what? T te- they teased the. Uh, let me see. Darth Maul, I believe, in in that game. Well, they did with this one what they should have done with the first one. The first one we all know was purely multiplayer only, no story whatsoever. I consider what they're doing now an expansion because the story should have been there from the get-go. And I'm speaking of this from experience because I have the original Battlefront 2 that EA did. And that's still the best Star Wars game as far as multiplayer go and story base of all time. Straight up, hands down. Because it's, it didn't follow the, uh, the other Star Wars movies because it, it, it stayed true to the originals. But... um. It was very solid. Like what I'm seeing with the current ones, including this new one, I'm seeing a lot of in the old Battlefront too. 
I, I have the box, so I still have the box, the original disc, all that. I still have all of it. It's somewhere in my room. But in, in terms of what they're doing now, I see that they listen to the fans. The fans complained that there was no story mode. There was a lack of characters, a lack of control, lack of balance. And they took all of this into consideration and gave us a sneak peek teaser at everything. And it's nice to see that they actually owned up to it all. Uh, personally, well, they can give, they, I mean, they have the beta right now. For, you know, they can give it a little bit more polish just to make it, you know, even better. But just the fact that they actually listened and added the few things that were completely absent in the first one, I think it's going to be a, a solid winner for E3. That That's just my personal take on it. Right. Yeah, like, yeah right. Clay? I wasn't really a fan of the original Battlefront on PS4. I have, right. I have it on my on my PS4, and I thought I thought that it would uh, it would give me a little something that was kind of like a competitive shooter, but like kind of different. I thought it would give me a little bit more excite excitement than your average uh, competitive online shooter, and I was definitely wrong. I didn't get a chance to see any of the gameplay footage from uh, Battlefront 2 for PS4, but I think it's cool because Star Wars is a thing that has like a deep lore. And you can't make supplementary material without touching on the lore. Right. That would be like an Elder Scrolls game coming out and there not being no story. Right, which people are trying to say that ESO is not having story, but keep forgetting ESO was before Arena. And I'm and I'm being old as fuck when I say this. I played Arena back in 94. I remember Arena. <laughs> I remember Arena. Not from 94, but from before fucking Morrowind and shit. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, and people give that flag, even though it's off topic, people but, give but, that flag. But as an MMO, as an MMO, as long as it contributes to the lore or references the lore in some way, like, you know, it's kind of like Elder Scrolls Guided. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, they're going... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I think uh, for Battlefront 2, they're including a DLC and modes and characters. They're free right now, so there's no season pass right now. Yeah, they, they learned their the lesson. the Last Jedi content on the way. They're including yeah. Last Jedi. Yeah, I, I honestly believe they learned their lesson from last time. Let, let's hope they did anyway. Oh, that's a lot of thunder outside. Well, it'd be a shame if my power cut off right about now. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Pick it up. Then we better pick it up. All right. So, what do you? How would you guys rate uh, EA's uh, you know presentation? Uh, personally, I would give it a six out of ten. Um, I think that they're fooling themselves if they believe that uh, if they believe that NBA Live is gonna make any significant noise in the 2K dominated basketball market. Also, the cinematic story mode, career modes, and sports games are a disturbing trend that I don't want to see grow any further. I think that it takes the personality out of like certain things, and I think that maybe integrating like they could integrate characters into the career mode more, but as far as having a scripted As far as having it play out in a scripted manner, that's a disturbing trend that needs to stop. It's not a movie. It's a sports game. Right. 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 The purpose of playing a sports game is, you know, to have fun playing the favorite sport that you like. Yeah. You shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to incorporate. I, I put it like this. Certain things don't need to belong, especially when it comes. I'm agreeing with you on this, Clay. A, a sports game should be just that. Include your favorite sport, whichever you like. And just have fun playing with with online with friends or in person with uh, people coming over. I mean, the core the core mechanic is just enjoying it. If you have if you want cinematic stories, you can always watch movies. It, it only we all know it only worked for one title, and that was um they bought I forgot the name of the boxing game already, but it had Andre Bishop. Yeah, that's the only that's, champion. 
second, yeah, that's the only that's the only one it worked for. It didn't work for anything else. The second greatest boxing game of all time, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, of course, hell yeah, that's that's undisputed right there. <laughs> but uh, if shit, I even had it a long time, ago, so I, I know. <laughs> man, like I think the servers is down. I man, I, I played that game all the time. Man, I used to win belts online and shit. Yeah, I played the um the uh the knockdown mode, uh, unlimited knockdowns. People couldn't beat me. <laughs> yeah. They kept wondering. They kept wondering how was I getting back up. They thought I was using a turbo controller. I said no. Years of playing Final Fight <laughs> did that to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. punch, 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 turn around, punch, punch, turn around, punch, punch, turn yeah. around. Yeah, years of playing Final Fight with just the, with my weak ass Y button on, on my uh on my Super Nintendo controller. <laughs> oh man. Okay, well Clay's giving it a six out of ten. What about you, Lionel? I'm gonna have to go with him on this one. It's a six out of ten. Again, right now their biggest thing. The only thing they have going for them, aside from Battlefront, is Madden. Uh, they should just go ahead and give it up on live. Because, again, we know what happened with that, and it's proof that it just did not work. So they should stick with what works. Probably if they stick with what works and didn't include live, I would probably score it higher than a 6, maybe a 7.5. Only because they're actually trying to do something different with Madden, but again, keep story mode out of it. As far as EA uh, with Battlefront, th- they're listening to the fans. They're taking lessons from uh, what mistakes they made, and they're trying to improve. We can't say they're not trying. So give them a few uh, freebie points for trying, but overall, a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. All right, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. I mean, we're doing half point. Well, let me. There are people who do half point systems, so I'm going to give them a 6.5 out of 10. I mean, if you want me to do like, like an other point system, I would give it, probably give it like close to seven. But there, I can see them just trying really hard with like you know with these other games as well. They're so like you said, they're listening to the audience. So, so I would say like you know I'll give them like a a little mini pass, but not not well enough though. Yo, right. Yo, yo, DB, I'm with you, man. One and a quarter liter boys. Right. The uh, like for example, let's let's just throw this in here. Ubisoft. Look how they listened to the fans when it came to Assassin's Creed. They took a whole year break before releasing uh, the new one, before at least saying something on the new one, which, by the way, is actually looking pretty good. I did see the trailer today when I came home from work. That's actually pretty good. They they did something right for a change. Instead of um, I, I, here, you probably can agree with me, Ubisoft was going the way of Madden. I call it the Madden syndrome. They were <laughs> same thing with COD's doing the Madden syndrome. I mean, yeah, if if you got a franchise or or something like that, or an IP is a big hit. You don't have to release everything every year. I mean, shit. What for? What a few tweaks here and there. You might as well just go ahead and keep the same game if you know that game is going to be good. Or or just keep releasing DLC up and like that actually adds more to the game. Right. You know, give give us content that's actually worth the uh, price of purchase, not just sta- not just tack on another uh, new co- new purchase to that same price, but it's just what one, two, three, maybe a half dozen minor tweaks here and there. Nah, man, nobody wants to pay for that. Who wants to pay full price for a game that they didn't do much of, and you're just getting what updated rosters like like what they did for. Uh, like well, I, and I can I can also put two K in the same uh, pit with that one too. Because look how many basketball games they did. Pretty much every sports game ever. Yeah, but like <laughs> the thing with two K though, I can I can definitely attest to the fact that the changes that they make are calculated changes that bring the experience closer to the realism of basketball though. Like yeah, like it, it's it's not it's not like they add like some new control feature like yeah now introducing crossover stick and that's the new thing like they actually tweak the physics and and like make the dribbling look better give people more dribbling moves and more different jumpers like more different jumper animations that might not have been in the game last year like different gathers for your layups 
Like they actually mm-hmm. try to do a lot to you know different physics when you bump into people. Like I, going from two K sixteen to two K seventeen playing defense, it's like completely different. You actually have to really play defense. It's not just hold and left trigger and trying to stay in front of the dude. Like you actually have to move your foot positioning and do all types of stuff. So it's like they actually do try. Like the tweaks seem small to it. To uh, like if you don't if you have if you don't play the game, but like once you actually play, you see like damn, it's way different. They're actually trying. Right. It's it's not as much of an aesthetic like other games. They're actually yeah. putting function. They're putting functionality and quality into it, and that's something I can respect. Yeah, continuously, because like with, with a basketball game, it's like yeah, it's, it's easy. It's easy to fall into the Madden syndrome with the with the sports game, definitely. Yeah, and it's, instead of take time to actually polish it and make it something uh, again worth the price of purchase, it's got to be worth the price of purchase. Again, you can't just release something and hope people to buy it just because it's your product. It's a well known brand. It's a well known IP. You know people are going to buy it because you know they have that specific audience that's going to want it. So you got again, you got to do. I would say. Any other sports developer should go ahead and take notes from 2K because they know what they're doing. That's hands down. I mean, we see the results for ourselves. Well, is it, isn't Take Two a part of Rockstar? Yeah, Take Two Interactive. Yes. There, there you go. Yeah. All right, Byron, what, you, what about you? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so, and they're do and they're doing it right. I mean, look how long it took for them to get Grand Theft Auto Five out. Look, just look look at how long it took. I mean, they, they took the mistake. They took what they did with uh, uh, that DLC Lost in the Dam and Battle of the Gay Tony for uh, GTA 4 and expanded upon that and made it better with GTA 5. Way better. Shit. Five years after the initial release, and yet it's still going, even through two different console generations plus PC. So you know they did something, right? I mean, Rockstar is not a bad company. Sometimes they make iffy decisions but it's not a bad company i mean hell they teamed up with square enix and we got max Payne three i think that speaks for itself true true two uh, two unlikely uh the two unlikely publishers <laughs> with one yeah. of them being the actual developer yeah that's good right yeah, you can go ahead man no i mean if you want to keep going go ahead oh no that's it i'm done i'm done oh, all right byron what about you your rating <sighs> Pretty much about the same as everyone here. I mean, every my, everything that Lionel and everyone's been saying is pretty much sums it all up for me. Well, I'll be honest though, as far as like Battlefront, it's been years since I ever touched that game because I think I, the last one I played, at least on the PS2, was I think there was a three for Battlefront, was in there? No, there was going to be a three, but it got scrapped. Okay, then it was two. Then yeah, the last one yeah. I ever played was two, and like. Like barely, I ever like played little of the current one. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, the, the one you played is the one I have for PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's the I, I, you go ahead. Yeah, I I think I even still have that game, at least for PS2, unless I accidentally unless I already uh, sold it, but I think I still have it. Yeah, uh, for those watching, if you want to go ahead and compare differences between Battlefront 2 in the PS2 era and Battlefront 2 now in the PS4 era, go ahead, by all means, take a look at it. You'll see why the old Battlefront 2 is still the best one hands down. It was more than just multiplayer. It was, it was, basic, it was more than basic story. You had so much you can do in it. Hardest shit game, but you could still do it. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh yeah, fucking library, dude. I I still to this day cannot pass the damn library. RNG's a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You enter the if you enter the door at the wrong frame, you're not getting past that mission. That's that's just what I'm saying it right there. Your ass is gonna get blasted by by fucking uh, by the stormtroopers that can actually hit you. <laughs> They su- they're supposed to miss their cheating. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. So All right what's, with, what's next? With Hardy? that being, well, with that being said, I guess we're not giving EA a passing. We're giving EA a passing grade, but barely. So we're giving them a D. 
Wow. Say a six point oh the D. I shall. I wonder oh, what you call it. A D. A. Is it six out of ten? Isn't it a D? No. Uh that's that's like a I think that's like a C minus. I said, I said, yeah. Six out of ten is a D. A F if we're going by like, you know I don't I mean if you want to go by Canadian system, that's a different grade. That's a F yeah. plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, we'll give him a D plus then. <laughs> I mean, since I upgraded to six point five, I mean if you want to count that as a plus. So yeah. Uh, with that being said about EA, let's move on to the next topic, which is, I don't know if everyone's looking forward to this, the Microsoft Xbox talk. <laughs> oh, 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 the Microsoft fancy DVR? Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> All right, the first talk is, let's. how about let's talk about their newest Xbox, like, quote-unquote, with the new name, the Xbox One X. What kind of, what kind of bleeping name is that? Xbox One X, and they're coming out in November 7, 2017 for pretty much $500. They're probably going to include Crackdown 3. They are. Oh, well, third third Crackdown, the fourth system. Yeah, you're screwing up your numbers there, uh, there Microsoft. Because remember, it's Crackdown... Coming out the same day. It's coming out the same day as Xbox X. Oh, yeah, I can't even cr- pronounce the name right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if if it can do true 4K, it might work out for them for those people who own those type of displays. If they're doing that checkerboard upscale bullshit, then it's not worth it. But from what I understand, it's going to have the equivalent of like a GTX 980 in it. Damn, I'm running a GTX 1060 now. I'll pass. <laughs> well, I run 950. I probably might pass on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm already stuck to my PS4. No point coming to that one, especially when it's just asking for a lot more money for me to come back to Microsoft. I mean, if you look at the design of Xbox One X, it just looks like it's similar to that um, uh, PlayStation 4, and it just looks like a regular DVD player. Well. I got the PS4 Slim, so I can't really say anything. Looks like a damn eraser, but okay. <laughs> like a school eraser. Well, that's, just <laughs> that's just my take on it. I mean, you you can feel free to disagree with me. Uh, no, nah, we're good, though. We're, we're good. It just looks like a school <laughs> eraser. It's like one of those uh, 90 school erasers with the double sides and shit. <laughs> oh, you, mean those, you mean one of those pink erasers? The black, oh, the black, and, white, the black and white one. Oh shit! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, oh man, I haven't used those in a long time. Usually, I just use pink ones. Oh man! Right. Uh, I'm not buying yeah. supplies. I'm gonna take those. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like it's just one of those. It's just one of those things. 4K is is gonna be in almost every household within the next couple of years. We hired one of our rivals, guys. So, like. You know, game, game console makers need to catch up with the with the change in technology. Right. That's true. Um, like, it's not a waste of money for people who actually have the proper equipment. That's true, especially if they put the time and effort to invest in it and make it worth it. Yeah, for sure. So, mm-hmm. I think I think that. They're doing the right thing as far as making an upgrade to make it so that, you know, people can get the most out of their 4K displays if they own them. But the name sucks. It's like yeah. Xbox One X. Like, well, I mean, yeah. if you want to well, I mean, if you want to go with that, I mean, we could we could like, you know, say Xbox One is ass. So, they they're pretty much saying it. Xbox One is ass. Let they should give you as a hit. <laughs> they should have. They should have stuck with Project Scorpio. Yeah, yeah that would have been a better name. Yeah, or fucking, yeah. you know, Xbox Scorpio, Xbox One Scorpio. Nah, well, Xbox Scorpio would have sounded better. Oh, yeah. True, well, and, I mean, and they would have, and they were originally sticking with Xbox One S. Now, why did they change it from S to X? I don't know. That's just weird all the way around. Well, yeah, that too. They could have done that, but then well, it would I just mean, be, yeah. The Xbox just, One, and, yeah. Sorry. 
Then they'll just be calling it the XP 14K. Then, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my breakdown of how they call it the X. Uh, the Xbox One and the Xbox S, like, you know, the, they had a trouble, like, you know, coming up with the next, uh, you know, decision. So they had the two consoles make make out, and then they become the Xbox One X. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a bit dirty there. But, yeah, it's pretty much what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, uh... A little bit quiet there. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm just shooting people. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think the announcement of the uh, the backward compatibility from uh, or, or original Xbox games is uh, very very makes me enthusiastic about the future of the Xbox One for legacy Xbox Live customers mm-hmm. and legacy Xbox users. Um, I think that when I think that when any system basically. Um, makes an effort to support their previous software um that's always going to be a great thing like you know imagine having a ps4 where you can just pop in your old ps2 or ps3 games and and play them you know what i'm saying like that would be a, a very very good thing but it keeps it keeps them from being able to screw you coming and screw you going so, yeah that's true so they don't necessarily put a candle under their ass to jump to implement that functionality. Yeah, they tell that to the, uh, the president of uh, Sony, who's we have, there was reports on it, and he's actually uh, owned up to it, saying that he didn't really see the appeal of um, the older games. Uh, wondering why people still play it. Like, really, dude, are you gonna say that on your own fucking system? People want that out of um, the PlayStation. I mean. Don't get me wrong. PlayStation Now is a good idea, but not everybody's going to have a consistent connection. And then, on so, top of that, and then on top of that, it's like... You're leasing the games. Yeah, like, what if I already own this PS3 game that I'm trying to play on PS, PS uh, Now? Like, yeah. you're not giving me a discount. Like, yeah. yeah, you're just streaming it, and if your connection goes down, so does the service. So Microsoft got them there. They literally got them there. Hell, Nint- hell, Nintendo got them there. Look what they're doing. Fuck, Nintendo got everybody right now. 20 bucks for a whole year, dude, as opposed to 50 from Microsoft and, and, and Sony. But I think we can give them a little credit. Look what you're getting out of Microsoft and Sony. You're getting so much more. With Nintendo is kind of stripped down, but you're still getting the same thing. Yeah, but you need to have an app on your phone to plug a headset in and... Like, yeah, and, and then that's you got to pay thirty extra dollars for an Ethernet port. No, thank you, that, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that's kind of that's. I'm not gonna say kind of. That is weird. What the hell were they thinking? Like, how do you have to pay for an Ethernet port? That would be like me buying a computer and having to pay for an extra Ethernet port or something. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I don't know what to say on that one. That's just uh, weird. I guess we can safely say that this year is E3. The um. The developers and creators have little idea of what they're doing. Nice ideas, wrongly implemented. It works on paper if you want to say it that. I feel like E three E three isn't the spectacle. Well, it's more of a spectacle than it used to be. A, it used to be more of a showcase. And I think now with the with the year round game development type of cycle, like. Games are always being developed and always coming out, so E3 is less of a less of a huh? thing. Okay. It's more it's more of a vacation party time for for the the people the people who work in the industry. Honestly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. true. I agree. All right, Barney, you got any take on it? Yeah. Just ever since my days with the Xbox 360, then with this. Xbox, Xbox One to pretty much kill out any love I used to have with it. I mean, I still have my old 360, but as far as the standards that they now have with Xbox One, it just kills it for me. I mean, you do all this stuff, but now it just backtracks what you are able to do in order to buy more covers into your company. I mean, think of games that you have. You have me, like with Gears of War, 
so much yeah too much fans coming to your systems you create a huge uh gaming scape right and, but now with that whole with the whole division as far as like functionality exclusive exclusivity it pretty much cuts it in the middle now it's like a huge gap in between each other yeah i agree with that man hell i still got my 360 and almost 100 games for that shit and most of it's on my heart or on the hard drive for it. Then the the suck part, only 40 of the near 100 games I got for it are even, um, are even uh, ported over. The rest of it is stuck on the 360. I'm like, nah, I think I'll keep my 360. Yeah. I mean, it's pointless. I don't, I don't see a point. Like I told, like I told Joseph, he asked me, was I go, was I'm going to get the new Xbox? And I'm like, why? Why would I get it when I'm already satisfied with what I have? I don't feel like spending more money on something I already have that halfway supports the stuff I have. That's just backwards, man. Well, that's just spending money just to spend money. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, people if people piss on money, they're going to get it regardless. Because it's yeah. Xbox. It's Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, they're going to dump their money on it. Yeah, but I mean that's with any um, that's with any developer. I mean, if it has the if it have the features and the functions that people want, of course they're going to get it and support the brand. That's all fine and good. I mean, there is a niche a niche uh, perspective for it, it based on what you think it should be. But overall, man, I'm just like I don't know it. I don't know. I guess it just rubs me the wrong way that they don't think some of these things through. Yeah, they try to improve and make something new and make it eye appealing for the consumer. And that's anybody. That's with anything, not just video games. But I think they should have a little bit more thought process on it and actually make it really worthwhile. Like they know they have an older audience that enjoyed the stuff that they put their time, blood, sweat, and tears into. And it should have a a little bit of consideration catering to the older audience to keep them along board or help them transition over to newer stuff. Instead, they just don't. It's like it's it's like it's half there, half not, if you wanna if I can put it that way. If if that makes sense. Well, I think I think it's because of the the difference between Xbox One and PS4. PS4 is developed primarily to be a system that plays games, whereas Microsoft Vision was more of a multimedia machine that could replace a number of things in your entertainment center. You know what I'm saying? So it feels right. like it feels like they're halfway there from our perspective as gamers because they don't want it they don't want the primary function to necessarily be just games. Right. It's basically, it's basically is the entertainment center. Yeah, but PS4 is already doing that, and but their main focus is gaming. We'll see, yeah. but, the, but the PS4's media functions are still not as robust. Yeah, yeah, as, as the Xbox One, and right. Um, you know, we live in the generation of cord cutters. You know what I mean? Right. Like we're not slaves to cable TV anymore, so. For a lot of people, an Xbox One is an ideal machine for them because they can watch TV through it. They can stream their video through it more. Like, there's more ways to do certain things on Xbox One. But in the gaming market, at the end of the day, most people just want to know, can you play good? Do you have good games available and can you play good games on your system? True. So, so it's kind of a, there's kind of a, there's kind of a uh, divide between like what Microsoft wants to do and what the market is all about right now, I guess. Yeah, that's true. All right, with that being said, uh, let's see, we kind of talked about Crackdown 3 a little bit. Uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, let's see. Original Xbox games, they're going to be putting it uh, on the Xbox One. So does that mean, like, you know, a backwards capability? I mean, we want to call it that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, they're they're implementing original Xbox backwards compatibility on Xbox One, and I think that's cool because it just adds another layer to the legacy Xbox, Xbox. library. Yeah, adds something, more games. Something so, that, so you don't get bored. Something that PS3 initially did. 
uh, for well, for PS2 before it became digital only. Yeah, like they had that emulator built into the original architecture, and then after like two production runs, that I was over with. Yeah, and that was a big disappointment to a lot of people, yep. myself included. Yeah, once I, that's true. Once I found out they took that feature out, I didn't even buy a PS3. I just bought an Xbox 360. Yeah, I, I skipped it for the exact same reason. Same. I'll, I'll looking forward to, uh, you know, playing all my stuff, like, right then and there. But, like, nah, not even worth spending the money on. I'll just wait till a PS4. <laughs> and that's just what I did, too. Yeah, I wanted to pop in my, my imported Japanese games. <laughs> all right, well, got a guy quite... Uh, let's see. Forza Seven. Has anybody ever heard of that game? Well, I haven't. I haven't seen any of the gameplay footage, but judging by Forza's reputation and the direction they've been going lately, it should be pretty interesting. They're going to, it's going to run at 60, 60 FPS at four K, and they're going to and they're going to feature seven hundred cars. So uh, that's that's two hundred fifty more than Forza Forza Motorsport Six. Wow, that should be that should be very very interesting and very very beautiful. Wow, for that many cars, dang! Well, like, it it is the current uh, most played ra- uh, most played car simulation racing game out there right now. Till the next Gran Turismo comes around, so till until until the next one comes around, if and whenever that's going to be, since that's done in ho- since Gran Turismo is done in house by Sony anyway, I guess we'll just have we'll have that for now. Right. See and okay, EA didn't show much yesterday, uh, but however, Microsoft did. So this game called the uh, Anthem, it's uh, you know the creator from uh, Mass Effect. This game has a jetpack by a Bioware. Yeah, it's it's kind of like Destiny. It's, it looks like it's trying to be kind of like a, a Destiny killer. Right. Um, graphically, it looks very very intense. Um, I kind of, I really enjoyed the scripted gameplay sequence that they played earlier. Um, yeah, it, it looked pretty interesting, but I would have to actually see where the game goes to see where it separates from Destiny, because it really, right. it really, really looked like, like a, a, a contemporary of the Destiny type of thing that was going on. Right. I mean, do you think it's gonna break? Hit? A, you think it's gonna be able to beat Destiny? Um, I don't know because um, we don't know how deep Destiny's fan base is or how loyal they are. It's it's a different phenomenon than like a two K versus live type thing where it's like you know they they've had that fan base for a number of years and they're gonna keep it. Whereas you know Destiny was kind of a phenomenon that hit and a lot of people were playing it but if something that expands on that formula and makes it better comes along will people migrate over to that like that is yet to be seen we have to wait we have to have a wait and see attitude towards that i cannot believe i sat here and hid in the bush and the cops don't see me what <laughs> are, well, are you I haven't said anything in, like you know. I haven't mentioned everything in all the lists. That's just like I believe that's just the biggest announcement that what they did at did at E3. I mean, the following games. Uh, like, let's see. The list of games are: I said Crackdown Three, uh, Sea of Thieves, Dave Decay Two. There's also Fable Fortune, Forza Seven. I just mentioned Gigantic, Phantom Dust, Ace Combat Seven, Skies Unknown, Assassin's Creed Origins. I think that's a rumored game though. Um, yeah, so pretty much that I think those were the big six announcements. I mean, we talked about Sonic Forces like a few weeks back, yeah. We mentioned FIFA, we mentioned FIFA, so we mentioned FIFA and Madden, so and pretty much the other all other games that like you know that were pretty pretty high that we have high expectations. I mean, so I don't know, like. I don't want to get too into detail because if we talk like you know games one by one, I feel like we might go for like five hours of of gaming talk. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much with the list, uh, what do you guys what do you guys all think of you know the uh, Xbox games, Xbox One's games that were confirmed at E3? Um, 
Go ahead, Lionel. Well, like I said, it's – I think right now their their main focus as far as games go when it comes to Microsoft, they're more in line towards talking about the – where I'm still calling it the Scorpio because it just sounds better than the Xbox One X, really. Um, but as far as that goes – Oh, no, this is all for Xbox One. This is not for X. Oh, for mean? Xbox – well, I mean, well, well, let's put it like this. They're putting more focus on their new hardware than the gaming aspect right now. Even though they got some games that's actually catching people's attention, they're still putting too much focus on uh, focusing on the newer hardware and not so much as the game aspect that people are looking for. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to talk about games, then yeah, that's all fine and good, but try to uh, try to be more of what your base is about. I mean, anybody can go with the hardware. I would I would say personally they should have just waited on this for a little bit longer and come up with you know polish it a little bit more. To me it just looks a little too rushed. That's what I think of it. I mean, yeah, you got good games in your lineup, but when part when what 30 35% of your talking is about the new system, come on, man. I don't want I don't want to hear anything about the new system. I just want to talk about the gaming aspect as far as, you know, what's coming around, what will be, what is there to be, you know, stuff like that. That's just me though. I don't don't pay no mind to me. I, I agree. Well, everyone's to to each yeah. his own. Okay? So everyone yeah. has an opinion. It's just an opinion. So it's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's it's again, yeah, with Microsoft, I mean, Microsoft's no slouch to gaming. I mean, PCs after all. But as far as the, the console market, they're still fairly relatively new. Uh, not not so much in the complete console market because you have the MSX that was Microsoft based in Japan back in the 80s. So they're not totally new, but for a more Western approach, they are. So they, I say they still have a long way to go to catch up with the likes of Nintendo and Sony. And even Sony's still fairly, they're not exactly new, but they're up there. Microsoft's got a lot to learn from both Nintendo and uh, and Sony before they can really get their foot in the door with anything hardware related and when it comes to gaming. I think they should just go ahead and stick with games. Because think about it. In the early to mid-2000s and a little bit, um, Microsoft was mostly focused on gaming, not so much as the hardware. So you had something to look forward to with good games, especially on the original Xbox. I mean, they tried it with new hardware and it worked, but their main focus was gaming. Now, like Clay said, they're trying to be a whole lot more, a, a straight up media center, moving away from talking about what they do best and pushing towards trying to improve what's almost not needed. But that's just my opinion. But isn't that what the money maker is? If you have multimedia, people are going to use it, use it more, right? Yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah, because that's what they have. That's what they have Apple for. Because <laughs> the, the thing, cause the, thing with, the thing about uh, being too multimedia is that those other forms of media still exist to do those other things that people want to do. Whereas when you want to play a real good game. Like, all you got is, like, gaming PC or a console to do those things on. If you want to play a real, real true-to-life video game, then that's what the console is for. If I want to watch TV, I have a TV. Like, if I want, like, you're not, just like we were talking about with digital downloads. That's not going to, that's not going to touch everybody. Right. That's for a specific demographic that's going to exploit those avenues to the fullest. Like, I mean, we all know somebody who streams everything and has the plug and knows where to find whatever live event that they want to watch or whatever. They got everything hooked into their computer or hooked into their console and blah, blah, blah. But that's right. Not, that's not everyone. The majority of and, people are still just just want to turn their Xbox on and play a game. And, right. 
and that's where consoles are going to shine because one, not everybody has a good connection. Two, even if there, if even if there's a good connection out there, it's not accessible. So yeah, the brick and mortar stores, the mom and pop shops, the physical media is going to stick around for a while longer until the infrastructure actually improves to where people can move towards digital downloads. But we're talking about another what 20, 25 years before that even becomes standard. I, I, right now, I, I would say closer to seven or ten, just because in our lifetime things have progressed way, way faster. Like technology progressed way faster than they did when, when we was growing up. Now that we're older, like it took a while for computers to actually hit and be in people's cribs. Like that's you know, that's I mean? true. But then once they got there, they got so fast, so quick. Like you know what I mean? Like the technology, the internet got better. The, the chipsets got better, the motherboards got better, the, the displays got better all so fast. So I feel like with everything being geared around the internet, like then things will progress a lot faster. But as of right now, they need to focus on making a gaming console that plays games, who that does better at playing games than it does at anything else. Right, because um, right. let's face it, most people now have multiple devices in their home. They have smartphones. They got tablets. Every, almost everybody and their relatives have uh, some type of PC or, in fact, hell, smart TVs. I got a smart TV for a change. It's yeah, basically... It's basically an Android TV. Shit, I can get fucking tune in radio on this damn thing. No problem. I can, I'm straight wireless on this TV, man. I mean, it does so much. It's like a gigantic 33 inch version of my phone, <laughs> just without the touch screen and the camera. But I mean, that's just a prime example. It's the accessibility. And if you already have these things, that you don't need to. What pay what three, four, five hundred dollars for something else that you already have in your home? You know, folk like Clay said, focus on the gaming aspect. At least get that out of the way and put your foot in the door to where you can ground yourself to where you know you have a good lineup of things that people want to play and have a decent selection. Yeah. Then you can focus on other things like media for those who don't exactly have that yet. Don't release a feature for something that isn't relevant now that people don't already have. I mean, hell, smartphones now are just as good as what people are buying now. Just more portable. You could do so much, you know, as far as everything else goes. So they should just focus on gaming. You know, give... I mean, if you want to do multiple stuff, we have PCs for that. We got tablets. We got phones for that. Smart TVs for all of that. Just leave it to those things and, and let the gaming aspect be just that gaming. I mean, I mean, let, let's let's take a vote here. I mean, who in here wants to have everything that already does the same thing except the one thing we want? <laughs> Man, I mean, me, just be me personally. The whole reason that I still to this day want to own an Xbox One is because I can move one of my monitors into my bedroom. And have like a multimedia box that can also play games. Me personally, yeah. I think that Microsoft would be better served to do what Sony does and focus on games first and add all the Amazon mm -hmm. Video and Netflix and blah 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 as separate, like secondary, and just get get better at it as time goes on while still focusing most resources towards gaming. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you on that. They they could do that. It's going to take them a while to actually figure it out, but give them enough time. They'll figure it out. You know they will. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, like, people are always trying to think, big, think bigger than they need to in certain aspects. I feel like Microsoft's thinking too big, and they're just forgetting, like, our fans just want to play games first and foremost. Right. Like uh, when Phil Spencer took over for um, – as the head of Xbox, he straight up outright said it. He wants to put his focus on games. That was a smart move. So now the focus has been on games, but I think that dream is starting to kind of drift away a little bit with the new the new system that's soon to come out. I mean, because it mm -hmm. still looks more like multimedia than gaming, even though they're still keeping the core aspect alive. 
I still say they should have waited a little bit, focus a little bit more on gaming, make it more gaming centric, and then add those features in, or at least strip them down a bit to where at least it still looks like a system. Because to me, like I said at the start of the podcast, it looks like a big ass DVR, <laughs> or or uh, or old school TiVo box. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, TiVo. <laughs> oh my god. Like a web TV box. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, why, it looks like a jo- small cable box, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Scientific Atlanta. Holy shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, with, shit. You know what that, but yeah. Uh, with that being said, oh, did you want to say something, Clay? Uh, no, I, was oh, just, I was just about to ask, what the, are we moving on to another topic or are we wrapping it up? Yeah, yeah. Well, to wrap it up, uh, let's give a quick rating. I'll give it 8 out of 10 because why? Because of, because of Dragon Ball. <laughs> I give it an eight because of Dragon Ball, <laughs> because that game already got me hyped up for Xbox One, and well, potentially, yeah, PC. It's gonna come out for all the all the platforms, but because Microsoft presented, yeah, I give them a high B. I mean, or just a B. Me personally, I, I would give them an eight point five out of ten because um, if you're giving if you're giving people true four K and not fake four K, um, you know, like it's a bad thing I think for um people who already own an xbox one but for anybody who's trying to get in and they want to get the best thing possible right now and have 4k you know display for for their 4k or 4k uh resolution for their display you know what i mean i think it's great and also yeah dragon ball man like they were the ones that they showed us that what we wanted to see first before anybody else had a chance to and that's great. Um, also, seen a couple other little exciting looking games um, like Fortnite, which looks very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about where Xbox is trying to go, but they definitely need to still right. focus in more on gaming. So eight and a half. All right, uh, Byron. Uh, seven out of ten. Of course, I'm not, of course, I'm all PS4, but the only thing I got out of that mostly was just the Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Well, so that's a pretty low rating. So pretty much we're averaging it down to kind of a low C plus B minus area. All right, uh, Lionel? 7.5 because they're trying, and I'm not going to say they really are trying to keep it gaming-centric, but the turnoff for me is their media aspect they're they're start they look like they're moving away they're trying to at least give a good impression that hey we still think about our consumer base we still think about our fans but let's try to implement a few new things just to catch their eyes you know catch their fancy see what they want and again that's not always a great thing so i, I gotta give them a 7.5 wow so pretty much if both of us average it up on a 40 point scale we pretty much gave it a like a c plus Yikes. yeah yeah, I mean, you know, better than EA, but okay. shit, they they need improvement. C plus ain't right. bad though. We're hard to impress. Let's keep it real. Yeah. Yeah, true. All right. Basically, we wrapped it up. Let's go on to the next topic, which is this is actually we're gonna talk about like you know, uh, should we say this as a personal standpoint? Uh, an Overwatch lever could Overwatch levers could soon be hit with permanent comp competitive bans. Which of course is what happened uh, last time with uh, Jeff uh, Kaplan. He like you know he got banned for it, briefing and I believe trolling or something like that. So what does everyone think? I ran a little bit into it. I'm um, again I'm not big on Overwatch yet because I haven't played it, so I can't really say much on it. But the actions of the person behind that pretty much speak for themselves. If he if he did that on purpose intentionally, then uh, from somebody who deals with a lot of online gaming, he deserved it. I mean, if you're going to be fair, especially in the game like that, don't be an asshole. I'm a professional asshole, okay? And I can tell you, don't be an asshole. It's not a good look, especially if you're being sponsored, like seriously, and people are taking you seriously within that genre of gaming that you're well-known and widely known. I mean, shit, this is the age of social media. Stuff and news travels fast in an instant yeah the moment you screw up especially on something like that gaming related oh man your career is over it's very hard to bounce back from something like that especially if that's all you're good at 
you can't you can't be like you know Chris G or any <laughs> right. Chris G oh. anything like that or any of the other well known people out there that's in into gaming and whatnot. You, you gotta you gotta watch what you do. I mean, everybody's looking. The whole world is watching, man. The moment you screw up and be be that guy, oh man, you're done. It, oh, that guy, that guy's career in anything else he chooses, if it's not Overwatch, it's over. His name's gonna be too well known. Right. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, folks. Uh, I kind of said Jeff Kaplan. That's actually the game director. I'm sorry about that. It's actually uh, the Fran. Or uh, how do you pronounce his name? The Fran. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Fran for griefing. Yeah, he got suspended by his team, and yeah, Blizzard suspended. I think Twitch banned him. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, he he got he got banned because of griefing, and I believe, and uh, among other things, not safe for work. Yeah. If yeah, um, I mentioned the wrong, I got the wrong name up. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, I mean, if he's very, I mean, a guy like that seems unapologetic for his actions. And in that case, it's just like I said, he deserved it. Not very many people deserve things if they if they truly admit that they're sorry. But if they just didn't give a shit, then it's very clear that he didn't honestly care about the the genre of gaming and the people that he was streaming for his audience or his audience in general. I guess he just got tired of it. If that's his way of exiting out of the scene, then that's just the wrong way to do it. But that's just my personal say on it. Well, it's not just about him. I mean, what? How about if like people just threw the game, like you know, threw the game in the mid- in the middle of the game? You th- you purposely throw the game away, like you know, that's obviously going to be a penalty. I mean, do you feel? Do you think it's fair to be, be banned? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, let's put it like this. We'll call it collusion. That's another name for it because that recently happened in Tekken, if I'm not mistaken. I think that happened in Evo as well. I don't remember. Yeah. No, it happened in the most recent Tekken tournament before Tekken Seven came out. It, okay. Um, no, no, it either that or Street Fighter. I can't know. I can't remember which one, but there was collusion, and I think both competitors got banned. Yeah, we're still in business. I, I can't. I have to look up the article. But I remember reading about this. It was it was collusion and something else. The the um. I think it was Street Fighter Four. I think it was Four. I'm not. I don't remember. It was Four. I think. I don't think it was Tekken. He said, mm. he said it was. He said it was recent though. It was recent. I can, I have to look up the article again because I was reading about it uh, before I went on my quote unquote vacation, and um, I was reading about it while I was on lunch at work. I'm like, well, damn. You you don't think collusion would still be a thing in this day and age? I mean, shit, you'd think players would know better, but, well, they didn't tolerate it. They caught up on it, and both got disqualified. Both got disqualified, and the bracket just it moved on. Whoever they had in there just advanced. I forgot, I, again, I forgot if it was Tekken 7 or something like that, but it was a recent fighting game. That much I know. If, you sure if it I, wasn't, you if sure I it wasn't Street Fighter? I'm positive it wasn't Street Fighter. I don't, Street, I don't, Fighter I don't, 4, Street Fighter I, Four had a collusion at a, at a, I believe in New York. So the, uh, I'm not. East Coast Dodo. Yeah, I believe uh, it's Sanford Kelly and Chris G. I think they uh, did. No, no, that wasn't Chris G. Chris G wouldn't throw him away like that. These were two people that literally threw the threw the match away by intentionally um intentionally losing to advance uh, it. And the other person was involved in it, and um, that was straight collusion. And both competitors got disqualified and banned from the uh, from any future uh, involvement because of collusion. I gotta go back and find that article. If I find the article, I'll let you know. All right, all right, uh, Clay. Hey, what hey, about? Hey. Did you have an opinion? Oh, sorry, did I cut you off, Lionel? Sorry about that. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm at the game. All right, Clay. Like me personally, I have I have little to no respect for any grief and type activity. Um, I don't really know much about the incident, so I can't speak on it specifically. But you know, that's that's a part of the reason why I try to only play team based games with people that I can communicate with, I like so that there's some sort of accountability. Because to me, there's no team without accountability. You know what I'm saying? I don't like 
I don't like to play games where other people's actions determine my fate as far as winning or losing unless we're actually working together and speaking to each other and trying to formulate strats and really be out there, you know? So, um, yeah, like any, like people like that, there's a special place in gaming hell for them. So, yeah. Yeah. If, if the game doesn't specialize in that type of sport, like AKA Grand Theft Auto or anything like else like that, it just does not belong period. No matter how you slice it. Yeah, like like in GTA, griefing is perfectly fine because of the nature of the game. Yeah, like that's like right now, I've been in this lobby. I've been in this lobby by myself, and this is a public match. Uh, this is a, it's public where I can actually do the uh, motorcycle missions. And there's no way I can do it with like 31 other people in here because I get my ass blown to smithereens every chance I would get. Just just for the hell of it, because that's what people do. Because I'm trying to make money in this game. <laughs> Legit, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yelling throughout the podcast. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like before the podcast started, they had so many people griefing with fucking Hydras and fucking uh, VTOLs and shit. You could not drive without getting your ass blown up. And these were people who had millions of dollars. They didn't care if they blew your shit up and cost a million dollars. They could pay for it. That's why all the DLCs free because they're paying those goddamn shark cards, bro. <laughs> Holy shit! Some, some, I, I kid you not. Some people are literally paying a hundred bucks for the fucking eight million dollar shark card. I, I swear, people are talking about that shit in this game, like really. So they're basically paying for the reason. They're they're the reason why <laughs> Rockstar's got all their shit for free on Grand Theft Auto Five, PC and PS4 and Xbox One. Is there, Shit. Another, is there another topic, Hardy? Well, I mean, I don't want to leave Byron out of the mix. Uh, oh, so. yeah, yeah, I forgot. He's so, he's so quiet, I'd be forgetting he's there. <laughs> <laughs> I am what everyone pretty much tells me I am. I'm just that shadow in the background like a ninja. With, with oh, man, are you, like, do we only call you, we only, once we call your name, do you, like, like you know, do you come in and in a smoke? Like, boom. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> All right, so what's your take on this? Uh, yeah, like, you know, players potentially getting banned for griefing and intentionally throwing. Yeah, it, it, yeah I'm pretty much with these two. So, I mean, uh, as far as other than playing Overwatch, I played with a lot of different people, and when they just do those type of things, it was just really gets on my bad side. Either I would end up dropping the game for, like, a week or so, I would possibly end up dropping it permanently. And with a game like Overwatch, I really don't want to drop it. So I've been playing with a few friends, even some of the people you guys know. Uh, pretty much people just find ways just to like run the game for everyone. And, yeah. I, I know those types, man. Call of Duty right. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even go back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, even me, me, and me, I mean, uh, Leon can attest to when we were playing. Uh, what's it? It was either Black Ops or Modern Warfare. I cannot it, remember. It was. It was Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, it, you would be surprised on the amount of things people were so were doing from just grief and at I, nuke. Nuke. Sni- <laughs> Well, snipers is a common thing, but still, they just oh my gosh, the ways they do it with it. They grief so, with the nuke, griefing with the nuke, griefing with the damn AC one thirty. Jesus Christ! I just said, "Fuck it, I'm out of here." Yeah, even the uh, cro- not crotch shots, but the uh, what's that mechanic? The noob oh. tube. Yeah. Oh my gosh! They just pissed off all of us. Yeah. Fucking chopper for me, dude. They they always call the chopper for my ass. I just quit at that point. They just kept on getting too much of those guns too easily. Can't even do anything when it's on search and destroy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Real story. Before we go to the next topic, I have to say this because um, Alan knows about it. Pretty much, yeah, Byron, everybody that me and you know, knows about this but this was back in the old modern warfare days clay you're about to find something interesting dude i had my first stalker 
Yeah. Um, yeah. On the, I, I'm going to give you the story on this and this is actually going to, you know, I'm actually going to stop playing for this one. The, the story for this, this was back in um, when the original modern warfare was in its heyday. And this was uh, <laughs> during search and destroy. <laughs> oh boy. Um, it, it, we was playing vacant and uh, I was the last person alive and I hid in a cubicle on the ground in prone and had C4 under the damn thing, right? And I was the last person alive, the other person, the last person alive. And the last 15 seconds came in. He was diffusing it, and I waited for him at the last second to hit the C4, and the shit blew up, right? Well, apparently, that's when I had my gamer tag, the same as my YouTube channel. Apparently, found out that I had a YouTube channel. This dude was stalking the fuck out of me. This was before swatting became a thing. I almost got swatted on before that actually became a thing from this dude as a result. Oh, boy, that was like six long months of this bullshit. Oh, boy, I, I, it got so bad he tried to hack my channel. Yeah, I almost had my channel hacked and had all, almost all my shit deleted, which it was for a short time, like legit no videos were there. I had to get in contact with YouTube, and we all know how hard that shit is. Oh, man. This dude, this dude, it's like this dude would, would never leave me alone, would make multiple accounts trying to come back and grief and trying to get my address and all that shit, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they got some people that just they just can't take it. So they'll do whatever they can to make another person's life miserable. And that was my first and only experience. Shut up, game. I don't. Shut up, game. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking Ron from TPI and sh- fuck that game. But anyway, um, but that was my first experience of it. And this was back in, oh, wow, 2007. That was 10 years ago. Holy shit. 10 years ago when that happened. Damn. Right. Yeah, it, it was about <laughs> almost 10 years ago, August of 2007. And Alan knows about it. Uh, Ubi knows about it. All of they all knew about it because we all played um, on the same team. We all played as our our own little crew. <laughs> but it was that moment that just made me start moving away from Call of Duty because I'm like, is it really worth it to keep playing that if people are capable of doing this? Yeah. And I'm kind of gl- and and I'm glad I did because look at what we have now with the swatting thing going on. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I think it's time for me to let that go because it's just not worth it. I mean, if you if you're gonna lose, you know, be a good sport about it and just take your L and go sit down somewhere. Don't just be mad to the point where you gotta go ahead and try to ruin someone else's life. That's just no way to do it. It's it's it's, 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 it's hey, but real rap, Lionel. Waiting until yeah. the fucking the last 15 seconds to detonate that C4 while he was uh while he was disarming the bomb. That shit had to burn. Like, that's a hurt piece. I'd have been swole. I'd have been mad well, as fuck, yo. <laughs> well, you see, well, you see it, it takes seven It takes seven seconds to disarm the thing. So at the last, when it's, because see, when it says 15 seconds left, they're going to say, hurry up. The time's almost up. So even if he, if he was to kill me, he could disarm the bomb safely. If I killed him, the round was over. It wasn't tiebreaker. That's just how Search and Destroy worked on yeah, Call yeah. of Duty. So so long as the people who set the bomb are all dead, you could disarm it, take as long as you want. Uh, people, and if you die, you get to watch the person who's disarming it. So they'll troll you by by disarming the bomb and spinning in circles, making you dizzy and shit yeah. with the camera. Yeah, that was, that. That, that was another way of trolling people. Another way of trolling people was picking up the briefcase and then and dropping it back down because on your end they'll say bombs being defused. So you would run there and they would go high and you'd never see them on the map and then you get sniped. In my case, it was a cubicle. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. In but other the, words, but, lose proudly. <laughs> Just lose proudly, please. Yeah, please. Be a, be a it, lesson learned here from my story, which is true. Be a good sport about it, man. Don't. I mean, if you're going to be salty, be salty. Take your L. I mean, it's just a game it's not that serious yeah, but we do not. but we but we do understand they got some people that take it just a tad bit too seriously and it gets out of hand and from what we've seen over the past couple of years with all the, the griefing and the swatting and all that that's just taking it way too far because somebody could really get hurt yeah lesson, so lesson learned develop social skills that way when you lose in a game 
it doesn't matter that much. You can be salty all you want. There's nothing wrong with that. You're playing something competitive where you're trying to win. And right. At the, at the, you know, at the end of the day, that's all it is. It is yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you, we can understand Pat being passionate for the game, but, you know, you have to draw the line. You have to find a way to draw the line where, you know, where it's okay to, you know, where it's okay to be, like, you know, be angry sometimes, but, yet, you, you know, you can still, you still have to understand at the end of the day, it's still a game. Yeah. Right. And I, I guess, I guess for some people, gaming is just not the thing they should be enjoying if, if they're going to go to great lengths to try and make your life miserable or find out where you are and and just just for shits and giggles because they feel like they can. That's probably the only it's probably the only bad thing about gaming now as a whole because it's too open ended and your information has to be out there. Like for example, you this is real. You cannot use a VPN and go on Twitch. Your Twitch account can get banned. Because they need to know your real location. And just because of that simple factor, people get swatted. I shit you not. Somebody I knew tried to use that. They got banned. Perma banned, by the way. Not temporary banned. Permanent banned. Because it's against their terms of service. Mm. It, but they know this thing's going on. But they're not going to do too much anything about it. Man, well, like, it would be, it would be better if, if Twitch set up an extra layer of protection within their own servers to where when people are streaming, it goes through Twitch's IP address instead of your own. Or... It's not. It's not because technically streaming is like it's peer to peer. So your actual information is going to pull up. All they got to do is use a PowerShell command. It's no different. The, the tools are very easy accessible. I mean, look at what's going on now. Right. I. I I mean, I think I speak for all of us to say I wish things could change and get better, but it's not going to get better anytime soon as long as they got people like that out there. It's I know what's going to make a change. It's going to take somebody getting hurt or worse, and we don't ever want that to happen because that's going to tarnish gaming as a whole. They're going to push the they're going to push the fault on the gaming aspect and not the people behind it that have no self control. That's just society for you. Honestly, it has nothing to do with gaming anymore at that point. That has something to do with the person. But yeah. that's not what. But that's not what society is going to see. They're going to see as as gaming being used as the outlet for it happening in the first place. Yeah. When we all, when you and I know better, that's not going to be the case because yeah. we're gamers. We, we was all alive during that whole Columbine <laughs> tragedy, and video games and music were used as a scapegoat in that instance. Oh, they played Doom. Oh, they listened to this type of music. Like, nobody ever wants to encounter the problems that the person themselves has. They always want to blame some external influence. They find an easy way out. They want yeah. to find an easy way What's the easiest one to blame? Gamers gamers, and mu music. But, which right. is kind of, kind of silly. Yeah, it is. But yeah, griefing sucks and griefers suck. Yeah, we can all agree on that. It's it's mm -hmm. it sucks. It, it does it, suck. Put them on timeout. <laughs> <laughs> e email question is next. Yeah, yeah. Finally, we get to email question. Okay, so with all that being said, that we covered uh, the E3, the Xbox, and yeah, we're going to cover uh, PlayStation, Nintendo, and the rest of the, everything else. And you know, we're going to do that post E3, so which is next week. So. Hopefully, we have the entire cast back on schedule. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and go to the email question. Is voice The email question is, is voice acting important in a video game if the gameplay is good? I'm going to start off with, uh, let's go with Byron. Since, yeah, he's been quiet mostly like a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as far as voice acting go, it's a requirement, but it can also be optional. Because I'm sure, like most of us here, we play games with, that didn't really need any voice acting. Pretty much the game itself is it's giving its own voice act. Right. Uh, think of games like, uh, uh, there was one that was revealed just last year at E3, that one story adventure game. It's like streaming. I, I forgot the name of the title. But basically, I had no voice acting at all. Pretty much playing the game, set his own tone. Right. Well, because well, I mean, well, but if like, 
for like really strong story driven games, you would need voice acting. But just depending on what you built into it, you can still make it work without it. Right. Um, you want me to go now? You can yeah, sure. if you want. Sure. Um, well, now, in order for voice acting to be a requirement, it would depend on what the goal of the game is. Now, if you're trying to create a narrative and you have bad voice acting, even if the gameplay is solid, that could play a detriment to the entire experience. Um... Yakuza 1, for example, I know a lot of people that were turned off from that game, even though the game itself is good because the voice acting was kind of hammy. Right. When you when you right. look at when you look at the Japanese voice track of this of the games in that series going forward, the Japanese voice track is just heads and tails better than what they provided in the first game, even though they had some pretty big name actors in it. They had like a uh, they had like Eliza Dushku play the main female character in Yakuza One. I think Mark Hamill played Majima. You know what I'm saying? They had some good. They they tried to do like a Grand Theft Auto thing and have some recognizable voices, but the voice direction wasn't good, so it kind of turned people off. <clears throat> um, yeah, I I don't think that voice acting is necessarily or good voice acting is necessarily a requirement to certain types of games. But if you're doing a story-based game and you're trying to create a narrative and you're trying to create some sort of immersion, hammy voice acting can definitely play a bad role in the judgment of the entire experience, even if the gameplay is solid. I agree uh, with that. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll go next. Um, I actually think it, I mean, I should say it depends on the game. It depends on the game itself. So like let's take a for example like uh, life is strange life is strange right that game majority has like you know choices right and it mostly just talk talks right instead of, instead of just the gameplay so if like let's say it has like let's say life is strange has bad voice acting does it take a it takes like you know it takes a big hit like you know even though it's good but with bad voice acting it takes like you know you know a gigantic hit right but 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 does, does uh but the fact that if the voice the voice acting being good doesn't isn't that part of what makes the game good in the first place? Like the atmosphere that it creates and the right the way the characters talk to you, you feel like you're really there, you're really on an adventure. Would the game be good in the first place without good voice acting to begin with? Well, I mean, I was. I mean, that's a good question, but I mean, I list sometimes I will really want to say like I want to say like you know voice acting does like you know it takes it's it's part of the I would say it's part of the game because if you like you know if you play the game and you know in even though like you know it's good but the voice acting is kind of kind of sluggish or you know kind of bad I mean it does take it does take some it does damage it but that's just my take on it. Okay, like let's look at another game. Okay, another game that has it's a good gameplay, but you know, bad voice acting. House of the Dead Two. How about that one? Yeah, but you see, remember? But see, I I feel that that voice acting, they like if it was good, I don't feel like the game would be as memorable. Like, mm. like to me, the bad voice acting in House of the Dead Two is part of what makes that game enduring. Like. When he fucking said suffer like G did, like in the form of a question, I fucking yeah. lost it. <laughs> like like the, the whole tone was wrong, but at the same time, we were still in the infancy of games having like voice acting like that. Remember, yeah, like I was like, yeah. help me, help me. As if there was another person <laughs> that you were supposed to be helping. Like, no, don't help that person. Help me. Like, you know, like there, there was just like, so there were so many things like it seemed like Sega like had some sort of technology where they just type words in and then random voices said them however they said them and they just pieced them together. But yeah. I don't know, campy, it's just like, it's just like those stupid campy movies though, bro. Some of those, those movies, some of those movies are so campy and stupid that 
they actually end up being good because they're so hilarious. I think House of the Dead 2 falls in that category because I don't think it was ever meant to be anything serious. And it just it's, it's an enduring uh, footnote in the history of video game voice acting that is funny no matter when you play it. But like when a game... Right. When a game that's trying to be serious and trying to be cinematic has bad voice acting, it might end up funny, but at the same time, it's really, really bad. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have that same effect. Or the so bad it's good, the scenario. Yeah, like imagine if Metal Gear Solid had bad voice acting. Like, oh shit! Oh my! Oh my! I don't don't ever want to imagine that. It's too good. No, but I'm saying. It's a great game, though, right? Like, right. the gameplay is solid there. Like, the first Metal Gear Solid for PS1, we're talking about that one specifically. Imagine if the voice yeah. acting in that game was bad. Do you think that the franchise would have took off the way that it did? Because no. part, of the no. thing that, part of the thing that made that game resonate with people outside of the video game industry was the cinematic feel of it. If it was just, like, look at what we can do technically and we can have these scenes and these cinematic things, but they're not executed correctly on a on a Hollywood movie level, then it wouldn't have been as well received. They'd have been like, hey, look, video games are trying to be mature, but like they need to hire better voice actors, and that would have been it. Right. That's true. What? Whoa, what just happened? Oh, Did nah, someone, break, nah, uh, someone break a dish? No, nah, I, I, I hit something that was on my table while I was bringing my oh. dish. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, voice voice acting is like you know, it's it's I wouldn't say extremely important, but I still think it's important in some sense to you know to go with the gameplay. But majority of people do want to just. But if the gameplay is extremely good, then the voice acting you could just put it aside. You can deal with it. Well, it depends. So, yeah. it, it just depends on what type of game that you're having people sign up for. I know. Yeah, that's true. Even though Yakuza is a fast paced action-based game when you when you want it to be like when i play that those games i watch every single cutscene. like i don't skip cutscenes in that game i sit back and i watch that whole shit if it was bad then i probably would just be like all right let me run through do some side missions run to a boss fight boom 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 just play the game but the fact that they provide a complete experience that I feel like is on par with like any great like crime type movie, like some Goodfellas, Casino, Godfather type stuff, and it's interesting and it has so many plot twists and turns and surprises and suspense and betrayal and you know what I mean, action and murder. Like that's a part of the whole experience. Like I love Yakuza as a gameplay, as a gameplay from from a gameplay standpoint, but. I, don't, I think without that full experience that provides that other side of that experience to me, I don't think I would regard it as highly as I do. It's one of my favorite series is like because it brings back that retro beat up feel, but then it also provides you with that lively world and that cinematic story that keeps you on the edge of your seat until the very end of the story. Like, And the narrative and the voice acting creates an atmosphere to where you're really immersed if the voice acting was bad i don't think i would have that same outlook on the game right so so in your case if the gameplay is good the voice acting is bad you would majority go with the gameplay like well, you know well yeah I, I i would go with the gameplay more often but like i said it would it would depend on what type of experience that they're trying to insist upon. If they're insisting that this is a cinematic experience and they have shitty voice acting, I'm not going to be with it, even if the gameplay is supposed to be good. Yeah, I mean, I kind of go, I kind of go with you at that at that point in the road. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, it's just it's a hit. It's either a hit or a miss. On well, it depends. though, like what you said, it depends on what kind of game it is. Yeah. All right, Lionel. You're the final well, one. Well, if from from me uh, personally being the type of person that actually played a lot of uh, story-based games over the years, I can uh, with and without voices, I can actually say it just depends on the overall setup. You have your English, you have your American voice actors and your your Japanese voice actors, and then when you look at the emphasis and the the tone that they bring into those roles that they actually bring to life, those characters and the scenes within the characters. I, I say, depending, let, let's use, 
I, I can use well, House of the Dead. With, let's just go with English, since majority of us just speaks English here. Well, like, you know, majority of us just speaks English. Well, example, there are just as many games that have a Japanese voice track with English text on the market as well, though. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, where, where I, from what I noticed and just experienced over time, is that when it comes to the English voice actors, while they have a handful of those that actually are spot on with their acting that makes the scenes not only believable, but relatable and makes you feel like you're really there. They have that few that try a little bit too hard. And I'm, and I'm saying that as a stretch because they over emphasize the type of scene or the action that's going on with that scene and just throws the entire thing off. It just, it's not, it's not ruining the experience per se, but it's just leaving you with a bad aftertaste, if I can put it that way uh, for you. Like, you you don't want to just, you don't want to have an overreaction of a specific scene like what Clay was talking about earlier. I mean, yeah, that's so bad it's good, but it's overreaching. You're, you're putting too much emphasis on the action that's going on that's being associated with um, the the type of event within that scene as opposed to, you know, keeping it uh, together with not pushing the envelope with that type of emotion and just toning it down a little, but just having more to do with the character itself instead of the scene. What what the English voice actors do, they put too much emphasis on the action itself, trying to force people to believe that's going on instead of just let it come out naturally. That's a better way of putting it. They're forcing the emotion to the point where it just sounds bad. Like it just sounds like they were, they weren't reading or putting any thought or emphasis or any, any concept into it. Like, should I make this scene believable? Should I try to push the envelope and just put real emotion there's a difference between real emotion and actually making the scene work. And that's across any language. doesn't really matter if it's gaming. You can even go into movies with that too. They got like the, like the B rated movies of the eighties. Most, most bad voice acting in the early nineties sans metal gear solid. Cause we're not going to include that because we know that's just the best of all time. But the earlier ones in the early day heyday of, voice acting for games, especially the English voices, they tried too hard. That's just bottom line. Especially, they tried too hard. Especially when you go back to some um, Turbo Graphics uh, 16 CD games that had uh, fully voice <sighs> voice tracks in English and things oh, like boy. that. There are some really, really bad voice acting tracks that really don't get as much recognition because not a lot of people are aware of those things. But, right. but, but to, to your point, Lionel, I think that there's a difference in the culture of voice acting in Japan and in the U.S. I feel like there is. voice actors are specifically trained to be voice actors in Japan, whereas most of the time, the people who do voice acting in America are actors who picked up voice acting as another trade, whereas a lot of voice actors in Japan go into the whole shit knowing that they're going to be voice actors and it's right hard. and and with an actor who's been classically trained they've also been taught to sell a scene with their emotions with their actions because they're the ones being filmed whereas it takes a different type of projection to fully sell a scene with just your voice right and not many not many actors in in United States can even accomplish that. There's very few that can make a scene so believable without being overreaching with the emotions that emit from that scene or that movie in general because, that just makes it memorable. Because they consciously are thinking about the fact, well, I don't have my face and I don't have my body to sell these actions. I have to do it all through my voice, so I have to try harder. Right. So it's like they're trying to, they're pushing that emotion when it's not necessarily needed. Pretty much. Yeah. And that's about all I have to say on it, though. So you think it's like, you know, voice act, is it really an important? Is it, is voice acting a big issue or is it just a tiny minor issue? Well, if I had to be truthful to you, um, voice acting as a whole, it's a, it's a big issue. 
so solely for the fact that the English voice actors, uh, a good majority of them that are really trying too hard should tone it down or at least take lessons on the vocabulary use the emotions that are being emitted within that scene instead of just saying oh i just you know i have something to pick up on like you said just have that skill readily available so they can be used as a voice you know let if they're going to be english voice actors let them be themselves instead of trying to force the scene because they have the right voice for the specific scene or act that they're going to be in. Let them work with what's available and tune it to the way they think that character should be in that movie or video game. It, it doesn't seem like the English voice actors study the voices of the characters in the Japanese version of whatever they're, they're going over enough. And like I see it a lot in um, when they do fan dubs of anime. Right. But these people actually do study the actors who do the voices of the character that they're assigned to. So you hear it a lot more in fan dubbed anime, like when they actually do, um, you know, amateur voice acting. You can tell they actually studied how the person who did their character in Japanese talks. And I don't feel like on a commercial level they do that enough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Can't argue there, man. Right. But you All know, right. but it's answering your question. Answer your answer your question. Yeah, I strongly believe so. But I mean, overall, there is room for improvement. But it just all depends totally. And so it depends on the game, then, right? Yeah, it, it most it mostly it depends. Even though it's not limited to just gaming, I mean, it, that's the biggest aspect that we're talking about right now. So yes, it just depends. All right. Well. All right, gentlemen, with that being said, we are done with episode nine of this KCGO podcast. <laughs> so next week, hopefully we can get the entire cast back back on board. Uh, you know, Cleveland and Evan, well, yeah, they're absent due to, well, Cleveland's got work and uh, Evan, I don't know where he is. He's probably sleeping somewhere, like, you know, on Mars or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So with that being said, uh, to, yeah, we hope the rest of you guys uh, in the audience uh, enjoy this episode nine of the podcast. So hopefully, you know, we'll see you all back here for episode ten. Uh, do you guys have anything to add? Um, uh, yeah, just follow me um, at twitch.tv backslash free Segoy. Starting a new YouTube channel um, by the name of Fighters Plus. Come check me out. Uh, check me out on SoundCloud at uh, backslash Kitsugoi or backslash 412-Sugi S-U-G-E-E and Thanks a lot for watching tonight. Alright, man. Alright, also don't forget to uh, tune in to our, join our uh, Facebook page and yeah, hopefully I can get a Discord later on. So yeah. Alright guys, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Everybody keep calm and game on. Game on. Game on. Are we off? Not yet.